Hello, children. Are you ready for some coming up and kiki in? Are you ready for a gay old time? Well, I hope you are, because now it's time for Hey Queen Beach House with your host, Johnny McGovern. <laughs> My luscious lifeguards of love, and welcome to another body audi audi episode of with me, your hostess and lifeguard, Mr. John T. McGoverness. <laughs> Today's show is going to be everything, my legendary children. We have top three royalty in the beach house. The Nashville Queen from season 10 of RuPaul's Drag Race with far too much sass and way too much ass. The bodybuilder Barbie herself, Miss Cameron Michaels, is here. <laughs> But before she flexes her tresses on out here, there's another queen I must let you know about. She gives us body as well. A lot of body. If she were a beach, why, she'd be Copa Punana. <laughs> She's a delicious drop of honey in the green tea of my life. And like a ray of sunshine, she's warm, she's strong, and if you stare at her too long, she will blind you. It's <laughs> Miss Lady Recouture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, hey queen. Or should I say, hey queen? <laughs> we need our fans today, sweetie, because it is high summertime. What is going on? Oh, the beach house is steamy. You know, Mother Nature has really taken her liberty with this um, summer and just heated us up. Heated us up, I sizzled didn't us. I for none of this. I ain't never had to wear a hat in the summer. No, I know, but thank goodness you're wearing the hat to thank keep goodness. the sun off your face. Because, you know, it's very precious. Mm hmm, it is. You um, look a little bit like a uh, housewife <laughs> of Atlanta today. Okay. <laughs> no, I look like. I ate Mimi and murdered uh, Sheree. Like, <laughs> ready to go. Bitch. And you dipped them in Phaedra. Yes, that I was like, mm. and then fuck Cynthia. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, you're kind of more like a housewife of Hotlanta. I know, right? I mean, Seriously. you are giving it all. It's fun. It's a great life. <laughs> what do you love most about summertime? We're here at the, the beach house. Uh -huh. You could go water skiing, snorkeling, parasailing. Okay, but but believe this or not, okay, are you ready? I'm ready. There's just one secret about me. I love to make love to the air conditioning. Oh. All summer. All fucking summer. We had the biggest love affair. Yeah. Like, yeah, baby, take it. Flip it over. Come on. Get colder. 68. 66. I'll be going there. You know what I mean? So, yeah. I know your favorite temperature is 69. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got our fans to keep us cool. Yes. We have the breeze blowing through the beach oh. house. It's gorgeous. And, honey, we have a big star in the house today. Yeah. We have Miss Cameron Michaels here, y'all! Yeah! Honey, yeah. she is a busy lady, and she was able to take a jetty yes. from the dock over to our private oh dock over here yes. at the beach house. Yes. So she'll be traipsing on up, looking like a summertime diva, right after this very gay break. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Guest today was in the top three of RuPaul's Drag Race. She is the bodybuilder Barbie. She is a lip sync assassin, and she is stunning. It is the one and only Cameron Michaels here today. Yeah. Hey, Queen. Oh, I get it. Yeah, you get it. <laughs> hey, Queen. Hey, Queen. What's up? <laughs> what is up? Not much. Travel around the world, girl, trying to get some sleep. Not really doing it, though. Not really doing no. it. <laughs> For somebody that um, just a little while ago was kind of doing drag part-time, yeah. you have certainly gone into high-speed super mode. Hyperdrive. Hyperdrive, like, yeah. yeah. I went from doing hair, and it's like, now I'm just doing drag like four days a week, and it's just airplane city, airplane city, airplane. I'm like a ping-pong ball around the United States right now. Now, do you still have 
some clients who are like, Cameron, why have you not returned my calls? <laughs> I have people that are like, uh, I miss my haircut, I miss my hair color. I'm like, that'll take care of you, be, you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll find somebody <laughs> else, sweetie. I'm not home anymore, I'm sorry. <laughs> I am busy. I got my own wigs to take care right? of. Right, you got your own hair yeah, to deal exactly. with, and a lot of them. Uh-huh, for sure. Yeah, and you're making quick changes in shows. You were telling me that you were just doing uh, San Diego Pride and that you only had three minutes to change. We are, well, we're touring Tense Across the Board Tour, and it's uh, me, Asia, Aquaria, and we're adding Eureka to the tour in Australia as well. Um, but we didn't have Aquaria in San Diego, so it was me and Asia. So uh -huh. literally Asia was on, three and a half minute song, and then me again, and it's like, okay, well I'm not changing hair today, girl. Y'all getting the same <laughs> hair, but in a different outfit, because I ain't got time to change hair now. And you're about to go and work the world, too? <laughs> yes, work the world. Um, I think that starts in September. Don't quote me on that. Right. She can't. You don't need to know your own schedule, sweetie. I check my calendar like a week before I go places, and I'm like, where am I going today? Just send, put me on put me on a car, put me on a plane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so are you taking this to like a duck to water, like to the newfound fame and the tension? How I are am. you feeling? People always ask me, like, you know, being a little more quiet or introverted, are you struggling? And it's like, I have my moments, but like, I love performing, and that's my favorite part of drag. And and everything else just comes with it, and, I, and I'm and i well adjusted now, I think. I'm doing good. Yeah, yeah. and you're looking good. Thank you. Now, I got six hours of sleep last night, so. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> the bags are not here today, I look all right. <laughs> well, the last time we heard about your sleep schedule was when someone asked you whether you were hooking up in hotels, and you were like, I only get four hours. No, I got four hours, and trust me, an hour, 30 minutes, however long you take, that sleep is important to me, so you can take that outside and leave it at the door. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> now, you are known as the bodybuilder bar. Uh -huh. Did you come up with that or did someone else coin that for you? Where did that come from? I just popped in my head one day and I was like, I think I'm pretty, so Barbie. And then mm -hmm. I was like, I work out, bodybuilder. I was like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. I, like, I need something, because everybody has some kind of tagline or something. Yeah. I was like, that's kind of what I think. Well, it yeah. really does work for you. Yeah, thank you. Now, are you able to still work out after in this whirlwind? <laughs> it's still my catchphrase. Don't point, don't, don't right. call me out yet. No, um, I haven't been to the gym, honestly, in about three months. Ooh, bitch. Um, I, ju I just don't have the time right now because I'm so busy. And this first year, of course, is the most crucial for all of us. Yeah. So I think I'm, I'm going to adjust next year when I have some time to get back into the gym. Um, honestly, between suitcases and airports and dancing is the only reason I'm staying in shape because I'm just, like, constantly going and very little sleep, so... And I'm kind of drinking too much alcohol right now, too, but... <laughs> right, are you, get you dipping your toe into the party lifestyle of a being a bit, star but I'm more on the road? That way. Yeah. I'm more fun that way. Well, so you don't okay. have to be introverted when you're a little tipsy. Exactly. I take a shot and a drink before every show. Oh, really? I do. I just do. spice it up. I just turn the party better. I'm a little tipsy. Yeah. I mean, we get to see a lot of the non-introverted Cameron yes. on your Insta stories. Yes, you do. Where you, get a, you have a lot to say. I, I do. I have it. a lot to say when the, cam when the camera is mine and not somebody else's camera. <laughs> right, exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make sure you are following Hey Queen TV on all your social media, Facebook, Instagram, and all the rest. Now, Cameron, we're going to take a little trip back and find out how you became the bodybuilder Barbie. Let's go. Let's we're going in the time machine. Hold on tight. Whoa. Ah! Whoa. All right. <laughs> We've landed. <laughs> That's fast. I know. We're good. We're good here. <laughs> you guys are We're in Columbia, Tennessee. Oh, God. <laughs> I haven't been there a long time. <laughs> now, that was where you were born. Is that where you grew up, too? It's not where I was born, actually. I was born, oh, really? I was born in Maslin, Ohio. Maslin, um, Ohio. Yeah, a little town. Both both very small towns. Well, I got to change the time machine. We got to go somewhere else. We got to go back. Whoa! <laughs> Boom! <laughs> We're in Maslin, Ohio. Maslin, Ohio. <laughs> Amish country. Really? I, I don't think Maslin's considered Amish country, but we live next to Amish country. So Amish Like the buggies and like they do cheese and dairy and like that's what they're known for, I think. Lady Red, weren't you oh, Amish God. back in the day? Ah! <laughs> no. <laughs> But you do love cheese and cows and things. I like anything uncut and cured. <laughs> <laughs> so what was that? What was growing up like? Well, so, I mean, born in Maslin, but I grew up in Columbia. So growing up in Columbia, um, it's hard. I mean, it's a small southern town. Mm -hmm. I actually went to a Church of Christ Christian school. Oh, Lord. And if you know anything about different religions, that is like, 
woo up here with the tutu. Um, yeah. So like, they're very strict, and I went there kindergarten through 12th grade. Holy the moly. The whole damn time. Wow, now were mm-hmm. you out to yourself during that time? Were you out in general? Obviously doesn't seem like a very welcoming place it to be. It was not very welcoming. <laughs> um, no, so I came out to my parents when I was 14, uh-huh. um, and honestly, like, it's just kind of a taboo subject, but like, if I would have been publicly out at school, they probably would have kicked me out. Right. That's just how they are. Uh-huh. Um, so I wasn't allowed to really talk about it or do anything at school. Um, so, but I had my home life and my family, and that was enough to help me, you know, come out as a young gay youth. But um, yeah, I definitely had to stay in the closet at school. And how were your parents? They were so amazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was. A, a, a very flamboyant youth. Uh, so I think it was pretty easy. You don't to, say. You don't say. <laughs> um, it was pretty easy to see it coming, so I think they were already prepared for that. Okay. Yeah. But they still kept just sending you to that school, the Church of Christ. Well, here's the deal. Um, my school was about 300 people, and that was 7th through 12th. Um, junior high and high school was 300 people, mm-hmm. whereas the public school was about 3,000. And I was uh, like, you know what? I think I could survive better with 300 people that don't like me versus... 3,000? Yeah. So I'm just gonna stay here where I'm safe. A wise decision. <laughs> yeah. wise I was decision. like, I'm just gonna stay here. I haven't got beat up yet. No, no, I didn't get punched or anything. I just got called names. So I was like, let me just stay where I'm not getting beat up. <laughs> I, I like that, that tact of uh, yeah. just avoiding the worst. I was like, yeah, let me just avoid the worst because I don't know what's over there. I know what I'm getting here. Right. <laughs> now, drag started for you at 18, right? It did, yeah. So I was actually senior year of high school. Um, I turned 18 the summer before that and uh-huh. I started doing shows. I was actually go go and go go dancing at a bar. Oh. Which it's is, senior uh, year of high school. Senior year of high school at a Christian school, and I was <laughs> leaving on the weekends to go go-go dance at a bar in a Speedo. And then I saw drag queens, and I was like, ooh, they're pretty. I was like, I want to do that, too. So they put me in drag, and then I just did drag on the weekends all senior year. Wow. And now uh-huh. that was, so you, that was in Columbia, or where were you doing the drag? Nashville. Oh, so you would go to Nashville. Yes, on the weekends, I would drive to Nashville and either go-go dance or drag, do drag. Uh, they, they ate you right up. They ate me up. I, 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 I adjusted <laughs> to the gay lifestyle very young, very quickly. Mm-hmm. I just did it all at once. You were like, you go-go, drag, I was like, everything. I want every piece of it because I wanted to get out of this small town. Now, you were not always Cameron Michael. My I was dear. not. You were at one point Ariana St. Clair. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> of the Nashville St. Clair. <laughs> <laughs> that name um, lasted about, I don't know, like two or three months, and I was like, this is. Uh, sorry if anybody else is like, that's somebody else's drag name somewhere in the universe, but that was not working for me. Ariana St. Clair was at home being like, that bitch! That bitch! <laughs> no, and I was like, I gotta change that shit. And then Cameron was the next incarnation? Yeah, so um, people think that I'm related to other Michaels, and I'm not. There was just no Michaels in Nashville, mm. and I liked that last name. It sounded kind of regal and fancy, and I was like, you know, let me, let me do Michaels, and then I just chose Cameron because it was androgynous, and I didn't want something too, super, fem- super feminine, so I just chose Cameron, and then Cameron Michaels happened. Now, when did you start, like, really taking off drag-wise? Because you had your own show at Play in Nashville, which is a pretty big deal. I did. Um, I started doing drag, actually, at um, a local bar called The Cabaret Episode 2. Um, it was a lesbian bar. Mm. I was on cast there before I was on cast at Play. And then I was on cast Sunday nights at Play. It was our amateur cast um, for about a year and a half. Now, for people who think you're shy and reserved, you were known as the, the lady who talks and works the crowd and does it all. You were quite the... the the vibrant speaking entertainer. I was, you know, um, in Nashville, there's a, a restaurant called Susie Wong's, um, which is, um, Su- if you know who Susie Wong is, uh, it's Arnold Mint. Um, she was on Top Chef. Oh and yeah. Yeah, yeah, so um, that's his restaurant there, and I host brunch there on Sundays a lot, and it's a one-woman show, so you have to walk around, host, you do about 18 songs. Wow. From about 10 to three in the afternoon, you walk around, work the crowd, so that's where I learned to really come out of my shell and you know talk on a mic and um, it, it work in a crowd environment. Uh, now, when was your, Body transformation, uh, when because you you you've talked you talked at some point about about how you you were sort of skinny and then you yep. really hit the gym. When in this time frame did that start happening? So drag happened when I was eighteen. I didn't start working out until I was twenty five, uh-huh. I think, and then I stopped doing drag at that point and kind of found the gym instead. Um, and then I went through a breakup and then went back to drag and then just kept them both. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you kept you kept yeah. moving. You kept like, bodybuilder Barbie. I, I tried to. You know, people told me they're like, "Oh, your arms are too big for drag now." And so I had people on both sides, you know, telling me, "You can't do it. This, you can't do that." I'm like, "Well, I don't really care what any of you think. I'm gonna do both of them because I can and I will." <laughs> Damn it. And you did. And I did. <laughs> yeah. Now Nashville is a big pageant. 
town. It is. It's, it's a southern drag city. Yeah, you were uh, in the pageants. You did yeah. Nashville pageant, pride pageant, right? I did, yeah. I came in second. I lost. <laughs> So now I've lost two pageants now. <laughs> <laughs> do you like the pageant system and that experience? I do. I think it's a great training tool for queens um, to to get into performing and how much professionalism it takes to put together a whole package like that. Uh, I mean, it was it was definitely a stepping stone for Drag Race. Drag Race is like a, a giant drag pageant. Yeah. Um, dancing, singing, you know, all the things that you need to uh, to win a crown. And I think it was a good stepping stool for me to like learn what I needed to get there. Yeah, and how you needed to prepare. Yeah, because it's a lot. You know, when you do a pageant, you have like one talent, one gown, question and answer. You have all those things and <laughs> Drag is like times 20 yeah. million. Every category, every, every episode. Every category, four different times, <laughs> plus all the wrenches they throw at you. A lot of wrenches. A lot of wrenches. Well, we're going to get into all those wrenches later. Let's talk <laughs> about it. Um, uh, when did you start cutting hair? I started cutting hair when I was 23 years old, because um, I've been doing hair for almost 10 years now. Uh -huh. so 23, I went to hair school. And that was what you sort of would go back to while you were doing drag? Yeah. Um, I, 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 I own a house in Nashville, um, so I, I kept my normal job because um, I wanted certain things in life and I know that doing hair would give that to me. Yeah. Um, and then drag was just like kind of a, a side hobby for me and then I found Instagram and you know, got my work out there through that and I just kind of did all of it at the same time. Yeah, and you managed to, unlike a lot of drag queens who have to save every penny because we know drag until you hit the big time not is cheap. not cheap not and cheap. not necessarily profitable right? It is uh, not. in your early years. It is not, it is not. So I, I had hair so I could afford drag. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's what paid for uh, those drag race looks. It is. Um, hair helped me get to drag race. So thank you, Paul Mitchell. And uh, Lucy Pop Salon is my local salon in Nashville. So if you live in Nashville, go see them. They do great hair. Yeah. yeah. Now, will you still pop in and gag the children? <laughs> I do. I go say hi. You know, that's my family. I worked there um, for nine years, and that was my life. And so I, I make sure I try to go, say, go home and say hi to them at least like once or twice a month. Now, let's talk about your on and off relationship with drag before drag race. Yeah. So you said in the past that you, uh, every time you get a man, you quit drag. I do, I do. <laughs> oh, it's funny, like, uh, I don't really read a lot of the comments, but I remember in the beginning I was like, kind of guilty of reading through the comments just to see what people were saying. Right. <laughs> and I remember one of my trolls was like, get a boyfriend so you quit doing drag again. And I was like, whoa, oh, bitch. Oh, shady cunt. <laughs> shade. A shade. <laughs> um, no, I, I would get in a relationship and you know, I think um, we all look for love and acceptance somewhere in our lives. And drag gave me that for a long time. And then mm. when I found love and acceptance somewhere else, be it in a relationship or a man, then I didn't need drag as much. Right. And then it took me to you know get into my 30s to learn, I'm like, this is my passion and I do love this and I don't need that right now. Mm. And so I was like, I want drag again. So that's why I auditioned for the show. I yeah, know, that's what, yeah. it was that last breakup, which was the best breakup that could have happened. That was the straw that broke the drag camel's back. And I was like, <laughs> I went on the show and fuck boys, I'm done. Yeah, I'm a woman. I'm a woman. <laughs> She's a woman. <laughs> um, uh, your friend uh, from House of Curio yes. created a lot of those looks. Yeah, so um, their names are Ryan and Kyle. Um, those are my best friends. And Kyle is my um, traveling tour manager right now with me. And then Ryan, uh, he sews a lot of the costumes that you saw on the show and a lot of the stuff that I'm wearing on the road too. How long did you have did you have with them to prep for your for drag race or did you sort of have a stockpile going? I did not and you know the funny thing is like uh, I think I said it in the reunion I don't know if it aired or not but um, I respected the other queens because they were working so much and they had wardrobe. I did not have a lot of wardrobe because uh -huh. I wasn't doing it as often. So um, I think I had about a month to pull everything together that I needed for the show. That was all. Those looks were major. It was a lot. I had some that were major and you could tell the ones where they <laughs> kind of came in last minute like my makeover looks right uh, you could tell the stuff that suffered and i got together like a couple days before i got on the plane right <laughs> yeah. you gotta do what you gotta do the feather gown was clearly like the one i had the most planned for yeah. and then the makeover looks were like <laughs> whatever if you want to see more things we can't show you in this interview with cameron that's a whole lot of stuff you're going to want to join us at patreon.com slash hey queen tv for all the juicy goodness podcast and more with Cameron. If you just can't get enough on this show, switch on over to there. Right, Cameron? Right. Yeah. Hey, Queens. Thanks for watching. For part two of this interview, click here. For more Hey Queen fabulousness, click here. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>